We talked today of the mitochondria, and one of my teacher, Professor D.P. Verma, who taught me biochemistry exactly 55 years before in first year MBBS. Uh, he was the associate postdoc working with, at that time, Nobel Prize winner in Boston, Harbin Govind, Har Govind Khorana. And he said, this is the seat. This is the seat. It is a reactor. And this reactor of the evolved from the U endosmic biotic theory concerned the origin of mitochondria and plastids, which are organelles of eukaryocyte cell. Actually, the cell, the nucleus of the amoeba, a single cell which is called the eukaryocyte, has a lot of power to regenerate. It has some DNAs of about few billions. But the mitochondria is a separate one. And you look at the figure here. It was the organelle which was engulfed as an endosymbiosis and developed proteobacteria in particular to close relatively and close chloroplast from the cyanobacteria. So it's like the, this is the tubule, proximal tubule. We all learned in third year MBBS doing the proximal tubule histology from the distal tubule. And look at these, these black spots, which have a shelf life structure. And these are the structure with the seat of the energy, which is the currency of the energy. Why we need a separate mitochondria? Why our nucleus did not do the job? Because when the simple mitosis occurred, there was no question of transferring energy. It was only legacy was being transferred. But when there was more cells, the meiosis, the halving of the cell DNAs, and then subsequent binary fission advanced, then the energy also has to be transferred. So mitochondria came into existence from the symbiosis, and they are the intracellular organelle responsible for producing most of the ATPs, which would be used. So mitochondria is like Bansi Shabu and Anuj Maheshwari, uh, who keep the money reserve. These are the good Gujarati Marwaris who try to preserve the money and don't lose it during the division of the further progeny, whereas the nucleus remains the legacy. People like me, Nursing Verma and Dr. Sharma, who remain only simple teacher right from the beginning of the career, they keep the legacy. So nucleus, many billion of the genomes capsulated into the mitochondria, bipair of phosphate bond, and then this is the mitochondria, which makes the great show. It's to generate energy in the form of ATP using series of redox reaction, and the process is known as oxfos. We'll use these two words subsequently when we talk the pathogenesis. Because kidney is a highly metabolic organ, requires amount of energy to maintain its normal function. And concretely, kidneys are rich in mitochondria. And in the proximal tubule, we in histology get the slide to identify, compare the number of mitochondria into the cell, into the endoplasmic reticulum, then the distal tubule. In reduction of mitochondrial content, increase in mitochondrial DNA damage. Hyperglycemia increase the tricarboxylic acid cycle and altered glycolytic pathway via elevated level of advanced glycation and product. Because uh, this is called the ER mitochondrial coupling. This is between the release of energy, the endoplasmic reticulum is stressed in the pathogens of the diabetes. When it is loosely bound, it decreases calcium uptake and decreases energy formation. When it is the moderate bound, that increases calcium uptake, increases reactive oxygen species, energy production, improves mitophagy, mitochondrial fusion and stress, and in a very tight situation, increases calcium intake, fission, in apoptosis, NLRP3, we'll talk these two signals before. So the activity of protein kinase C, the hexamine also contribute to mitochondrial dysfunction and have been found to have a pivotal role in the progression of diabetic nephropathy. Hence, therapies that target mitochondrial function would be beneficial to elevate diabetic nephropathy progression, which has been verified by several mitochondrial targeted antioxidants including coenzyme Q10, mitokinone, and TP3131. Uh, this is a popular diagram to all of us saying that it is the basement membrane in diaptic nephropathy. It is the fenestration between the two epithelial cell 
in the endothelial cell in this space which gets damaged because of the inflammatory cytokine which gives the permeation to the albumin which is a larger molecule with almost 19 Armstrong unit and get the space into the Bowman's capsule. It's the mitochondrial fitness which is primarily regulated by the energy production, inflammatory cytokines, any sense as you at your age advances, you also get changed into the mitochondrial fitness, the mitophagy, calcium homeostasis, we talk in the redox signaling. This is the two word, the fusion and the dynamics into the different two situation and I'll talk in a moment what these situations are and, and they are responsible for the fusion and fission. It's like the nuclear reactor I said in the beginning, you try to divide the mitochondria, retain the energy to shift into the next of the cell and during this shifting, some of us would lose the functional integrity of the mitochondria. This is the primordial germ cell I was talking to the meiosis. Meiosis is the ge genesis of the mitochondrial power sustaining energy into the shelf. And during oogenesis, when it divides, divides into the two, and these major mechanisms of mitochondrial DNA genotypes during the oocyte development, purifying selection in the mitochondrial DNA genetic production. The reprogramming, mitochondrial reprogramming is this responsible for the genesis of the diaptic nephropathy. We all believe that it is the beginning, is that is the basement membrane, the endothelial dysfunction, changing the concept uh, character of the podocyte, and then making the protein to seep out. But it is the mitochondrial reactive oxygen species, fragmented mitochondria, then Christie formation, mitochondrial membrane, potential changes into the potential of the membrane, in mitochondrial biogenesis. This is what would happen from the beginning in the early part of the, this is experimental model of the diaptic rat in which from the few days to the middle and the late, you get complex energy, initial the ATP which gradually slows down in the complex activity and then comes down to the baseline. This was the initial observation though published 2021 uh, in the antioxidant basal journal but there's excessive enlarged mitochondria in the kidney of diaptic nephropathy. That was the first observation to be made. Why these patients have such enlarged swelled up mitochondria? And the reason was ultimately found. It is the tubular epithelial cell podocyte damage. Also the mesangeal cell damage. Also the endothelial cell damage, which is responsible for the mitochondrial dysfunction in those patients who tend to develop nephropathy much earlier than other clinical manifestation. So the, all the three, it is the endothelial cell damage, the apoptosis, the inflammation of the mesangial expansion, that was the response for the increased size of the mitochondria, the podocyte damage, and also the tubular cell increased apoptosis and autophagy together responsible. And look at the pathogenesis. One is responsible, the autophagy of the endothelial cell is responsible for the change into the fibroblast, uh, enhancing the fibrosis of the kidney. Other two is responsible for the proteinuria and the mesangial expansion. I talk to you this, and then I'll quickly go to the, some of the functions of the dysfunction and mitophagy, which is the beginning and end of the diaptic nephropathy. This is important. This 2013 publication, but the current pharmacological therapies used to individualize the diaptic nephropathy do not prevent the in variable progression to the diaptic and renal disease. What all we learned from our beginning, that it would continue to do so. You have a diabetes, you would continue to deteriorate. Only drugs would retard the progression, slow the proteinuria, may not revert you back. And therefore, what we have developed, or that scientists have developed, the molecules. This is the first molecule, thioredoxin interacting protein, TXNIP, which regulates tubular autophagy and mitophagy and diaptic nephropathy through mTOR signaling pathway and which is the important pathway for the mitochondrial regeneration. Then pyruvate kinase activation may protect against the progression of diaptic normal pathology and this is the PKM2 mediated response activator TEPP46 
which reverse the hyperglycemia induced elevation of toxic glucose metabolites in mitochondrial dysfunction. So now this is very specific. We are not treating endothelial dysfunction. We are not treating protocide. We are not eating protein. We are not treating the fibroblast growth factor. But we are directly referring to the mitochondrial health. And this is the activating, and these are the examples of the TEPP which are used. In 2018, it is the very old molecule, chloroquine and amodiaquine enhances AMPK phosphorylation and improve mitochondrial fragmentation in diaptic tubulopathy. We have adaptic glomerulopathy, we have adaptic nephropathy, now we have adaptic tubulopathy. So looking at the beginning of the story of the protocyte damage in protein leak, this molecule, chloroquine, such an old molecule, and amodiaquine enhances AMPK phosphorylation. CoQ10, so famous, so important, and many of us are using this molecule, improves the mitochondrial dysfunction through mitophagian, uh, and this is what the mechanism, look at the TEMPQ, look at the bottom, it improves mitochondrial reoxy, uh, species targeted antioxidant action. Then this is 2022 February publication, SGLT2 inhibitors. Now we are looking, this is what we do. We look at the molecule, then we look at the basic science and then try to get a proper answer. Metaformin or sodium glucose transporters have potential to inhibit the, pro provide renal protection to the improving mitochondrial cell. Empagliflozin, so another one, electronic, uh, electron microscopy analysis have showed that mitochondrial fragmentation was decreased by using 8-hydroxy-2 deoxyregulation. Content was low in renal tubule cells treated with empagliflozin. So we have a now answer which molecule is doing what at the mitochondrial level. Berberine. Anuj must be very happy now. This is berberine. Berberine has potential to improve the mitochondria of the tubule in a diabetic patient, hence improving the tubular health cell. Then this is the 2020 renal physiology publication, the dynamics and emergence of the diabetic renal proximal tubule with beta-2 adrenergic receptor agonist for metrol. What a wonderful news. So far we were using for the in bronchial asthma. And re I remember my teacher, Professor Vikesh Shavastar, long, long back, that at that time we used beta agonist. It improves proteinuria. Look at those teachers, 100 years, 60 years back. And this was the teaching of Professor Smesher in KGMU Lucknow. That even derifilin at that time, patient in a diabetes would prevent the progression of the tubular damage. This is the sum of the quick food item, a skin peptide from one of the fish have shown that it prevent the mitochondrial dysfunction and improves by BNIP3 NIX signaling. Look at the bottom red, improve the mitochondrial morphology, reverse the overproduction of mitochondrial superoxide desmutase and cellular reactive oxygen species. Then this is the mitochondrial kinase PM, PINK1 DAP inhibitor, which has a, a lot of function. And studies have suggested that targeting PNK may offer promising alternative for the treatment of adaptive kidney disease. This is Dr. Nursing Verma, popular belief, intermittent fasting. And you generate ketone bodies, which help the cardiac myocyte. It also improves your mitochondrial function in the tubular system. And ketone bodies, they help in the autophagy, thereby delaying diaptic nephropathy progression. Fibroglass growth factor 13, sensitive alteration of Perkins safeguard mitochondrial homeostasis in endothelium of diaptic nephropathy by promotion of the mitophagy and inhibition of apoptosis. Atorvastatin. Who thought it? But nephrologists did it. Nephrologists used from the beginning statin to retard the progression of nephropathy. And the answer was probably lying somewhere else. And this was the answer that inhibits adaptic nephropathy through upregulation of PKM2, which also improves mitochondrial function. This one of the complex molecule, 1415 epoxystereonic acid, which is tongue twisting, 
and it stalls the progression of the uptake of property through regulating PKM2. Taxofoline inhibits the uptake of property through upregulation of PKM2. And then sudden affair. Better to invite Dr. Deepak Jumani, who uses a lot of sudden affair and can improve your kidney function as well. So next speech by Deepak Jumani would be on sudden affair, how to improve mitochondrial dysfunction and also improves your kidney. A perilous state, another molecule. And these are the molecules which have come in last four to five years. And they are being still used. They have started, and like aperlastone, we have started. We are using phenylalanine. Now we are using the combination of the two to improve the uh, tubular function. And therefore, it improves on aldose reductase inhibitor used in the treatment of diabetic nephropathy by PMK pathway. So to conclude, mitochondrial dysfunction is one of the earliest event in the pathogens of diabetic nephropathy, much, much earlier than basement membrane damage occurs, much earlier than the tubular dysfunction sets in affects mitochondrial fission and fusion in a high energy charge metabolic milieu. It's oxidative phosphorylation, oxphos of mitochondria affects podocyte in with angel architecture of Bowman's capsule. This is what exactly we want. We wanted to hit both at one side. We wanted to take care of the food process, podocyte, and also take care of the mesangial growth factor, which is responsible for the IGF-mediated fibrosis. Mitochondrial stress affects autophagy, at apoptosis of mesangial cell, vascular endothelium promoting proteinuria and glomerulosclerosis, many new and old drugs like SGLT2 inhibitors, berberine, atorvastatin, beta-2 receptor agonist, pyridoxamine, and sildenafil as coenzyme Q10 have, been, have the potential to improve mitochondrial function. So thank you very much for your listening.